Now in this video we're going to talk about profile lanterns. Just like all the other lanterns we've looked at, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they have common parts to all of them. Now what I have here is probably one of the very earliest profile lanterns, it's a Rankstram Pattern 23. What it has is a lens at the front, which is a clear lens, it looks a bit like a magnifying glass lens. And if you were to shine a light through this, what you would get is a clearly defined spotlight. It's a circle. And by moving the lens up and down, you get it in or out of focus. Modern profiles have started to use two lenses instead of one. So if we look in here, we see we've got a lens here and a lens here. And these can be moved backwards and forwards in relation to each other. And that alters the beam pattern makes it narrower and wider, and also takes it in and out of focus. I've now changed lantern to make it easier for me, but you'll see this is a profile lantern. It still does exactly the same job, and when we turn it on, we get a clearly defined edge, a classic spotlight, and then when we move the lenses backwards and forwards, we take it in and out of focus, and we can also make the beam wider and focus it in. To shape the beam there are a series of shutters built into the side of the lantern and so you can use that to frame a doorway or a window or something like that or just to keep the light off the side of the proscenium arch. To focus a profile I like to adjust it to the size that I want it, plus a little tiny bit, and then you start to slide the shutters in to get it where you want it. So for instance, we might say we don't want any light on the top of the proscenium arch, we don't want any on the side, and we don't want any on the bottom. And then that will then overlap with the profile coming in from the other side, to create a nice evenly lit stage. You can also use these little metal discs which are known as gobos and it's an etched stainless steel disc which when you put them into a gobo holder like this you can then use to project Now this is a spooky forest, which if we focus it in properly, if you can imagine you've got that projected on the cycler armour with a little bit of smoke, perhaps a little bit of colour in it, and that would be the start of a very spooky looking forest. You can get thousands of gobos and it will be the subject of another video. As well as being used for front of house lanterns, you can use profile lanterns on stage, but obviously some of the wider variety ones, to allow for the fact you're coming in from a very short throw. When we get around to discussing lighting design, I'll show you how to work out angles and choose the right lantern for what you need to do. As well as conventional theatre lanterns, there are specialist profile lanterns. The one you're most likely to have come across is a follow spot. This is the lantern that follows somebody around the stage operated by somebody. You may remember from our video about floodlights that we talked about the pageant lantern. And when after the Second World War the government needed to keep vast numbers of servicemen busy and meaningfully occupied, they created a series of military tattoos and pageants. And the pageant lantern was developed in order to flood the area with light. But they also wanted to highlight areas and so they developed the follow spot. This is a profile lantern. But because of the very crude optics that were available at the time, they ended up with a lantern that was over eight feet long. And when the manufacturers took this to the army and said, look, this is what you've asked for, unfortunately we've created a lantern which is absolutely unwieldy. No one person can deal with this. And the army said, don't worry, we're the army. We've got lots of people. Um, and it enabled them to do demarcation lines. And so what they ended up with was two people operating the lantern. And you'd have a private who would stand at the front, 
and he would move the lens tube about and he would work under the guidance of a sergeant who would stand at the back and he would operate the lantern and the iris which enabled the thing to follow in and out. Though I suspect you won't find that story in any textbook. Hope you enjoyed the video.